Welcome. My name is Jan van Meegem, and I'm a professor at Northwestern's Kellogg School of Management. This is a brief video to show an example of process analysis that is part of the core operations management course. Specifically, I'd like to show how we can use Little's Law in a particular example. The example that I'll use is patients visiting a doctor's office where first they will check in. They may have to wait a little bit before they have an initial doctor consultation. 25% of the patients after that consultation decide not to continue with this procedure. 75% do continue, which means that then the doctor requests tests for the patients. The patients may have to wait again for the nurse to take the tests. And there's an entire process afterwards, but let us focus on this beginning uh, initial consultation process. So the goal of this example is to show that we can use Little's Law at every step of the process. For example, we can focus on the first buffer and we can ask ourselves how long do patients wait on average before they have an initial consultation with the doctor. So take a moment, stop the video and ask yourself, on average, how long do these patients wait? A common answer is that people say, well, it takes 12 minutes for a doctor consultation. On average, there's two patients waiting, therefore, they would wait on average 24 minutes. However, that reasoning is incorrect, because if you make that reasoning, you are assuming that there is only one doctor and that that doctor is doing only that one particular consultation activity. Neither of these assumptions is given, nor are they correct. There may be multiple doctors, and these doctors do a variety of other activities beyond consultation. So we are not given that information. However, we are given that on average, two patients are waiting, and we also have the average throughput, which is four patients per hour. Therefore, we can directly apply Little's Law. Inventory is two patients. Throughput is four patients per hour. Therefore, the average flow time through the buffer, which is the average waiting time, is inventory divided by throughput is 30 minutes. We can do the same calculation for the second buffer. Maybe stop the video and try doing it yourself. However, here again, we have to be careful. While the inventory is given one patient, we must be careful with the throughput. Remember, of the four patients on average that start the process, 25% of them quit. So we must be careful with the throughput calculations. So I recommend that you look and carefully decide that there are actually two types of patients. There are the patients which I will call the quitters. They follow the short route, which is here depicted in red. That means that on average, out of the four patients per hour, 25% quit. So on average, we have one quitting patient per hour. The remaining 75% of the patients continue the process throughout and their throughput, of course, is the remaining three patients per hour. So the point I want to make here with this example is that it is beneficial to differentiate that we actually have two types of patients. Let's back focus on the second buffer. We now know that the throughput through the second buffer is only three patients per hour. So a similar calculation now is one patient is the inventory, throughput is three patients per hour, and that shows us directly that the average wait in the second buffer is 20 minutes. Now that we have all the activity times, we can directly calculate the average length of stay of a quitting patient. Five plus 30 minutes of wait in the first buffer plus 12 minutes consultation gives us 47 minutes. Similarly, summing the flow times of the green round, we get 103 minutes for the length of stay of the patients that go through all the activities. On average, what is the flow time of an average patient? Well, we can take the weighted average and say that 25% of them will stay about 47 minutes, 75% will stay 102 minutes, which gives us a grand weighted average of 88.25 minutes. That is the average flow time of a patient in this process. 
So this is one way of calculating that flow time. However, there's a second way. The second way says that we're going to use Little's Law directly for the entire process. So now I draw a box over the entire process and can utilize Little's Law immediately. Remember, the throughput now is four patients per hour. That is the average inflow rate. It also is the sum of the two outflow rates. The only thing we need to calculate now is what is the total average inventory in this process. We can do what we did before and at every step of the process, apply Little's Law. Again, stop the video and maybe do this for yourself. Okay, after you've done this, the way I did this is I just put it into Excel. At every step, I compute the throughput. At every step, I also know either the flow time or the inventory, and I can use Little's Law to get the third variable. I sum all these inventories at all of the steps, and I find that the average inventory in steady state is 5.8833 patients. Therefore, applications of Little's Law directly on the entire process gives us the flow time of 88.25 minutes. And of course, that equals our previous calculation. And that was the point of this entire video. Thank you.